look at its Ed, £275 bud here. With that recent shock drop of the Nike Air Zoom Alpha Fly Next% 2 via the Swooshes website, you get the sense that there was a bit of one-upmanship going on here. I think Nike wanted to get one over on Adidas before they had the chance to release their Adios Pro 3. Today I'm going to discuss whether that Alpha Fly Next% 2 really is worth £275. Thanks for tuning in guys, always appreciate it. If you haven't done so yet, please help the channel out by doing one of the following things, or all of them. Hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when I launch the new videos for you. You can also give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. If you've got a question or a particular comment that you want to highlight for me, you can give us a super thanks as well using the icon just below. Also, if you have received some odd reply in the comments section, which appears to be from me, saying you've won a prize or something like that ignore it that isn't how i would contact you it's just some malicious weird spam bot thing i've tried to block it if it comes up again i'll do the same thing and just get rid of it if you were to ever win a prize from me i'd contact you in another way so it wouldn't be like that right let's get into it so Adidas is set to drop their Adios Pro 3, I think it's on the 22nd or the 23rd of this month of June 2022. So 20s there and 2s. An easy setup for Nike there, telling everybody where you're going to release your shoe. They went and dropped the Alpha Fly Next% 2. No fanfare or anything, although lots of other reviewers seem to have already had pairs and they've shot you know, special videos where they're wearing Elliot Kipchoge's vest. Not his actual vest, but one that looks like it. So this is the shoe of the goat, the most space age design that we have yet. And it's also the most expensive running shoe that we've had also. I mean, you could discount the Vaporfly Elite or whatever, because they just weren't really available to general public people like me. You've even got some pictures of Elliot Kipchoge holding the shoe. That's all the marketing that you need. I think Adidas publishing that release date was simply asking Nike to get in before them. And guess what? They did. You can bet your bottom dollar that Nike did everything they could to get enough stock for people across Europe for the drop of the shoe. Obviously in very limited numbers though, exactly as they do with Jordan 1s and 4s and all that type of stuff. SB Dunks, for example. You want just enough to really light the blue touch paper, but never enough to quench everyone's thirst. It's a bit like a band when they finish the end of their performance and everybody wants more and you know you're probably going to get some more. I always like it when bands don't come out. That's it. Leave people wanting more. That's what Nike do. It was an unannounced drop and it all went a bit crazy. Wild hype with shoe fiends foaming at the mouth to get their hands on the shoe. I had no idea it was going to drop on the day when it did. It took me off guard. I attempted to get the shoe. I was sadly unsuccessful. I got some like strange error messages and stuff and then I actually had to do some life things and like, get on with it. So yeah, I'm a little surprised they didn't launch the shoe via the sneakers app or to members only via the Run Club app. Either way, I think the biggest surprise here rather than the unannounced release is the price. £275, the most expensive super shoe yet. I mean, it's getting on for a grey old pair of Jordan 4s or something. What else can you buy for £275, I don't know. A fridge freezer or something? You could probably use the packing foam from the fridge freezer as a super shoe. This update to the Alpha Fly Next% percent really does take simplicity to heart in the upper materials. Let's be honest, 275 Earth credits is frankly ridiculous, isn't it? Or is it? There's a lot of cyclists out there that have suggested that they've spent way more on specific cycling shoes. I mean, you can get four or five pairs of the Reebok Energy 4 for the price of one pair of Alpha Flies. I think your best bet, really, if you do want to dip into the Alpha Fly Next% percent scene is to go over to StockX and pick yourself up a pair. There's loads where people have obviously hoarded them and now they just can't get rid of them. Is £275 worth it? I, I don't know. It's a bit like that MasterCard advert, isn't it, where they say, oh, you know, this is priceless to someone. Is it worth that, though? Whenever I go to Denmark Street in London, I look at the guitars there. You've got these really old, you know, 50s or 60s guitars. Loads of wear on them. They've clearly been played. They've been loved. And they're up for extortionate amounts of money. You know, seven, eight thousand, maybe even higher than that. Is it worth it to buy that? or get one for like 2000 for example that's in pristine condition and you can put all the knocks and dents and you can rub all the paint off yourself 
You know, is any shoe worth that much that's been produced in a factory? There's probably some hand-stitched elements to this one. Let's be honest that large portions of this shoe are probably created using some sort of automation. I did run a poll on the channel and after 1,400 votes, only 14% of people suggested that that price was fine as it's a top level shoe. 86% of the vote said no, it was pure madness. It's about 24 hours I've been running that poll at the time of making this video, so that's a pretty reasonable number of people that have responded. If you did manage to get a pair of the Alpha Fly Next% 2, let me know down in the comments. If we compare this shoe to something like the Street Fly, it's like 130 Earth credits. I mean, the Street Fly's got some rubber outsole elements, it's got some Zoom X, it's got a very similar sort of upper material to it, yet it's half the price. In the current climate, I have to say, it's getting a little bit out of hand now. These type of practices, I don't feel that they're good. I don't feel it's a positive way forward. I mean, it's great if you can get a pair of these shoes, if you can afford them, yes. And I understand that they've put some things in place to even the playing field or try to make it more balanced. I mean, having access to a shoe and actually being able to afford it are two different things, aren't they? Put it this way, that price does rule this shoe out for a number of people. And if it's that much better, if it makes you that much more efficient and your running form will be better, you'll go faster, it, you won't use as much energy, that's an unfair advantage. I mean, is the price in the development of these materials and putting them all together. It's a shoe. Shoes have been around for a long time, right? Zoom Air, Air Zoom, Pibax, rubber, carbon plates. They've all been around for a very long time. Some earlier reviewers who have been sent the shoes prior to this embargo suggest that the rubber is reduced in the outsole and the drop's now 8mm compared to 4mm. Now I do remember Nike saying that they'd replaced part of the foam in the forefoot with the AirPods because they had a higher energy return. But now that I think they've put some foam underneath those AirPods, does that mean they've reduced the amount of foam in the forefoot to get that higher drop? A lot of people hated the four millimeter drop in the Alpha Fly Next% Percent original. So maybe they're trying to appeal to a wider market. The spiel on Nike's site suggests that the AirPods are repositioned. I mean, they're still here in practically the same place, whether they're slightly further forward or back. I'm not sure. Maybe down the line I'll grab a pair if they become available. Although I have to be honest, I really do like the look of this Proto colorway. I got the Next% percent 2 in the Proto colorway and the Street Fly, so it'd be nice to add this one to the collection if I did get a chance to get one. I'm going to have to sell something though. Maybe one of the guitars will have to go. I think it is quite an expensive outlay for what effectively is the same shoe but remodeled. I think the drop to me in the Alpha Fly original was almost like a negative drop. It's so compressive and squashy, you found yourself sinking into the heel and the rear of the shoe. Of course, you had that much more rigid feel in the forefoot with those AirPods and the plate as well. It just felt like a, almost like a negative drop, I suppose. I think the other interesting thing here in terms of Nike's accompanying documentation is to how focused they are improving the race experience for all runners that are chasing their personal bests. I found the Alpha Fly Next% Percent original to be wide enough, though it does appear Nike have expanded the width in both the forefoot and the heel, only by a few millimetres, so it might fix that issue if you had that in the original. I always found it quite stable of a shoe, really. A lot of people said it was really unstable, I've never found that in the Alpha Fly. The other change appears to be in the arch. Loads of people said they could feel their foot hanging over the arch. I think they've remodeled the midsole a little bit, certainly in that midfoot area, and that problem should now be alleviated. So lots of changes in the shoe to make it more universally favorable to a wider range of runners than perhaps where people thought it was aimed at in the cream of the crop elite. Where does this leave Adidas in all of this? I bet they'll be wondering who's held on to their cash ready for the drop of the Adios Pro 3 next week. Are people going to be underwhelmed this year by the seemingly heavier super shoes that we're getting in 2022? All just seem to be going up in weight rather than down. I guess if the shoe performs better, great, but that isn't always the case, is it? More isn't always necessarily better. Look at the Takumi Sen 8, for example. That's an absolute winner of a shoe. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one down in the comments musical interlude time for you. Released back in 1994, the My Iron Lung EP from Radiohead is one of my favourites to this day. There's some great tracks on here, some 
sort of outtake stuff, B-sides and things. The Trickster is one of my favourites, some wonderful guitar work on that one. Got a, quite a sinister vibe about it. I really like the strange rhythms in Lewis Mistreated as well. Sort of lurching style, again very sinister. Radio had really had that vibe going on around this period. You Never Wash Up After Yourself is perhaps one of the most sad, not depressing, but melancholy songs I think I've ever heard. And there's a fantastic version of Creep, but done in an acoustic fashion here on the EP. If you can find it, go and check it out. The My Iron Lung EP from Radiohead. Hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when we launch the new videos for you. Give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. Don't forget you can also support the channel with a super thanks, which is just below. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.